Well, welcome to Better Preparedness. On today's episode, I want to talk to you about a small action you can take that could either, well, help save your life or lead you to getting treated more quickly should something serious happen when you're out there running or biking or whatever activity you do. Well, as a former first responder, as a firefighter, volunteer firefighter, you know, we would help accident victims of various types, uh, but also as someone who's been actively well, training or racing in running, cross-country running, cycling, mountain biking, cross-country skiing, snowshoeing, kind of enjoying, I love the outdoors. And I'm sure by this point in the channel, you're, you're seeing that is that I just love spending time in the outdoors. I find it does so much good. All this to say though, that I wanna to talk to you about ID and the question of whether to bring ID with you, how you bring ID with you, how you identify who you are. Because when things happen to you, if you're injured and needing treatment, if you're incapacitated, uh, not really coherent, maybe you've been knocked out or well, Sadly, if, uh, if ever you were killed doing one of your activities, how are you going to be linked to who you are? How are you going to be linked to the health care that can help you, to notify the loved ones who are going to help you? Uh, maybe your loved ones need to come and you know, assist with uh, the private care that exists in your country. Who knows what? But all this to say, you've got to be thinking about these things because they're important topics. And you know, three types of ID you can have, and there's more of them. You know, you could have a photocopy or pictures, pictures of them on your phone. You could have the real one. I'm sometimes worried about losing my ID, but really when it comes down to it, you have to think through the legality element. You know, what do law, you know, officials expect you to have if you're asked for ID? And well, you know, you could also get in trouble, but I guess my feeling is sometimes if I bring a photocopy of my ID and my wife's ID, you know, in a plastic baggie, color photocopy, uh, well, at least that's something to go on for the for a police officer. Maybe that's enough if they're a nice person to, to let you off the hook for not having the real thing, but at least they can link you, maybe uh, if they look you up or whatever it is. So think through things like uh, ID bracelets. I used to think of them as a bit of a money-making scam at, uh, you know, race registration or race expos when you go to a marathon or something like that. But the more and more, I'm a firm believer of it. And <laughs> the ironic thing, of course, is I, I forgot to wear mine. Usually I have one with me. Um, I like to just put it on. Well, it's not really, a, like if you get one that doesn't really jiggle around too much on your wrist or, you know, cause any wear on your arm. Um, well, it could be the one that links you to hopefully someone identifying who you are. Maybe then on my bracelet I have my name, my, my wife's name, her phone number, uh, our employer to help identify so that they can be linked uh, with who I am and well some key information maybe you have a, you know, a lethal allergy or or something like that but you know think through these things because if things really do go wrong you need to put the odds as much in your favor of getting the treatment of being identified and well, sadly, if something you know terrible, terrible happens, at least there's something for the authorities to go on. Years ago, I was biking home from work, and I was just minutes what behind an incident that happened, where a cyclist got uh, well killed by a bus. Uh, someone, you know, fellow cycling commuter. And uh, how long did it take authorities to make a connection? Did this person have? Uh, a wallet on them, hopefully. In my case, in some of the countries I, I travel around, what happens if my wallet is stolen? And maybe the ID bracelet is not stolen because it doesn't really look like anything impressive. So maybe that would be still on me if I needed help or remembering some of those key phone numbers that were on there. And, you know, think through what happens because uh, it would be terrible if private care, for example, in wherever you're living, refuse to treat you because they didn't know who you are. They didn't have the means to link you to, to their system. Maybe you're already registered and they would have happily, you know, 
escorted you right in and uh, cared for. But if you don't have anything that identifies you, like your health card or, or your ID, um, well, how are you going to get help? So I'd like to hear from you down in the comment section below. What are some instances where you, know, you really wish you'd had more ID with you? Or you got into trouble for not having ID with you? Or, you know, what are some, some tips you have for helping people? And uh, what's worked for you? Because that's, you know, that's something that's, you know, we're all in this together. And when we're out here in the African bush or in a park or in a long run because you're doing your marathon training, you got to be thinking through, well, what happens if you have a heart attack? Uh, if you get hit by something or you get mugged or attacked or you know, just victim of random violence. So think through these things, put that in the comment section below, click that like button and the subscribe button. And right beside that, there's a little bell. I uh, certainly appreciate if you subscribe and click that like button. Thanks for watching Better Preparedness. Gonna give you a little footage of some trail running here. Cheers, bye.